<laughs> We're beginning, right? Yeah, begin. Hi, folks. <laughs> See, you, you can't even talk. Daddy right. has no morals. <laughs> it's, 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 it's no, no, it's what? pronounced <laughs> differently. Oh so my God! Why, 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 why are you sucking up to me now? This is, this is why are you sucking up to me now? This is about Khalid. Wear a condom. Wear a condom. Just. <laughs> you know, you gotta make it weird. <laughs> what could we have done better as parents? What were your expectations for your fifties when you were my age, if you had any? You may not be here. I may not be married to your mother. Welcome so. back. Welcome back to Kenton and Habiba. As you can see, I have Kenton here with us, and we also have Khalid, son number one, who is the subject of this video. So I'm sure you guys know that Khalid will be leaving us soon, and I thought this would be a great opportunity to ask him some questions as a parent. And he doesn't know the questions. We have not rehearsed this clearly, uh, but I thought before he launches into the universe, that we ask him some important questions, some thoughtful questions. So, you want to start, Kenton? You want to start question number one, or you want me to start? Uh, question number one? Well, yeah. So folks know that he's graduating, right? All right, oh, go ahead and tell him a little bit about Khalid, because he's probably not going to tell them, so you go ahead. Okay, so allegedly he's my son, <laughs> and he's graduating uh, in about two and a half weeks, you know, uh, so, and he uh, has been accepted at NIH uh, into a program uh, doing research. And so he's going to be launching uh, and moving uh, to Maryland uh, to start that and uh, hopefully into his medical career. So, so that's where we're at right now. The yeah. first question is really, it's like, how do you feel? How do I feel? Yeah, you know, feelings. That's the I thing that you get when... <laughs> You have an emotion, a reaction to I feel, something. I feel fine. I'm, I feel ready to move out mm -hmm. and do my own thing. And yeah, you know, looking forward to that. Yeah, and uh, and you're comfortable in the kitchen now, right? You feel like you've got picked up a few skills in cooking. I feel all right enough to like boil water, make what I need. Okay, like what? I'm not gonna make anything extravagant. So, so like water, hot water. So for those of you who don't know, Khalid is 21 and like I said, he is our oldest. Uh, he has always been, I guess, what do you, would you say he's the most serious of the three? They're all serious. They're, just They're in all different serious, ways. yeah, just, just in different yeah, just ways. Just in different ways, but he, you know, he, he's, he's been, you know, very, uh, also very uh, The most analytical, I would say. Well, they're, they're analytical too. I they're guess they're all, they all they're kind of are, are really, yeah. right. But yeah. what makes Khalid different? Oh, there's a lot of things that make Khalid different. <laughs> this you was know. about us asking him questions, but y'all have to get to know him first. So yeah, what different. makes Khalid different out of the three? Well, I mean, I think I think his approach to 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 things, you know, questions. I mean, in that sense, he's very analytical in a Star Trek -y kind of way, <laughs> you know. Um, but he has a good He's heart. like cringing. I can see he's got that like, uh, <laughs> he's got, he's got what that was daddy gonna say? Yeah, no, I mean, he has a good heart and, uh, he, you know, he, uh, but he's, he's also very focused. He's extremely focused and he's extremely disciplined. Right. That's one thing. Like, right. Like, right. You know, he'll come down and have breakfast and then he'll watch, you know, a, a show for 10 minutes and exactly at 10 minutes he'll stop the show. Even if it's in the middle of a dialogue, <laughs> Ten minutes is done. He'll stop it. And why? Because I would be downstairs just putting around before <laughs> work or classes or whatever. And I'd be like, "Oh, what are you watching?" And he'd be like, "Oh, ten minutes up." Now I don't know if it's because it's ten minutes or it's because it's me. So yeah, he can be very disciplined. So he's and sometimes disciplined. discipline. I mean, well, most times discipline is a good thing. But depending on the context, if you're so disciplined to the point that you're not flexible, that can come off as rigid. So sometimes we have this conversation about balance, you know, that sometimes you need to be a little bit more flexible and you gotta learn to adjust depending on the situation. But yeah, truthfully, for most instances, you know, discipline is definitely a good thing. My first question, Khalid, <laughs> we'll start easy, we'll start easy. Who is the most 
strict parent between your dad and I, when you think about pretty much your entire life up until this point, who has been the most strict parents? Kenton or, well, Ken, daddy or myself, would you say? And why? Uh, I, I wouldn't say strict, but I would say um, very, I would try to think more positive word than doting. But um, it probably be uh, dad. In terms of education, um, he was out of the two of you. Strict wise, yeah. I don't know how to put it. Just say it. Well, yeah, it's fine. It's he's fragile. not <laughs> right. He's not that delicate. You're he's not going to hurt his feelings. He wanted, he, wanted to, he wanted to know everything in terms of every assignment, every test, every date, every. Thing. He like he knew all of our schedules, so I would say th that that's why they both had expectations. But I would say whoever was on me for something, it'd be daddy. Okay, that's cool. Well, how did that make you feel? Uncomfortable. Make you feel uncomfortable? But it good just became because that's how it's supposed to be. Usual. That's right. Not to let you <laughs> slide, <laughs> huh? I would be doing my job. <laughs> huh? Alright, okay. <laughs> mommy's not. They're both strict, but... So in what way is mommy strict? In what way has mommy <laughs> been strict? Mommy's strict in terms of manners and discipline, morals. Daddy's strict in terms of... Daddy uh, has no morals? <laughs> It's, it's, no, no, it's what, pronounced di differently. You no, what, differently. What, I understand what you're trying to say. Right. It really, it's like form and function. Yes. Your mother's form. Yes. She, she, she gives you life skills. Yes. She gives you the things that mothers do, yeah. which is talk about the whole you, while I focus on the specifics, the actual functions, uh -huh. right? The right. process. Like your mom takes the totality mm -hmm. to make you the best you. That's what makes your mom the best. Oh so my God! Why, 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 why are you sucking up to me now? This is, this is why are you sucking up to me now? This is about Khalid. What look, is he doing look, the most? I'm in finals right now. You're pulling me <laughs> in. I got final exams. I just finished one, and I have two uh, next week. What's the biggest lesson that you've learned from your father? What's the biggest lesson you've learned from your father? I don't know. Exactly. You learn nothing. Because I, I wouldn't be able to specifically say what lessons well, I... Well, that's why I said the biggest or the most prominent. What comes to your mind when you think of your, your leaving us? And uh, what lesson have you learned from your dad? Well, hard work pays off. Keep going at it. I don't know. Okay. Nope. All right. That's fine. Daddy, do you have a question for him next? Never give up. You know, keep... If you like something, you know, always yeah. come back to it and work on it. Work on it. Be flexible. You know, sometimes things change. You know, change. Adjust to adjust your plans. But stay on your goals. You know. What advice from your mother? Would, uh, have you felt been very helpful uh, as you navigate through college and stuff like that? Um, be open. You know, be more willing to talk to people and get out of your comfort zone and your shell and mm -hmm. be friendly. Mm -hmm. right. Be willing to stretch, you know, be, you know, outside of uh, what you think is your comfort zone. Because mm -hmm. you don't know until you try new things, right? Mm -hmm. Just like your mother, you know. So that's, that's why she's the best. Stop talking about me. This is not about me. <laughs> All right. Next question I got. Um, oh, we'll change subject kind of. Five things you will do to stay healthy. So now that you're moving on, you don't need us anymore. Five things you will do to stay healthy. Um, exercise, eat healthy, uh, have outlets to de-stress, uh, call you guys, I guess, that's four, five. Wear Sleep. a condom, wear a condom. I don't know, What, that it's keeps you my, healthy? It's not on my list. It's on your list. Top five. Just, <laughs> you gotta make it weird. 
<laughs> like I make it weird. <laughs> That's what he said. Is that modern parents? <laughs> I don't know. She's just throwing. See, she that didn't even you. come from me. That she didn't even safety. come from me. Okay. Safety. Usually I'm the one who makes it weird. Eat safe, play safe. All right. Um, Be safe. Lessons you have for your brother and sister. Like, obviously, they're still in college right now. Mariam is going to be a sophomore. Kareem is a sophomore, going to be a junior. What lessons do you have for each of them? Um, if you have a goal, research ways to reach it. Like, you know, coming into college, I was like, oh, I wanted to go into med school, but I didn't know what uh, were the requirements. I needed to do volunteering. I needed to get involved in this, this, and this or ways to um, improve myself as a candidate. So, like if they have an idea for what they want to do after college, just you know, write it down and then kind of look at what other people or what other students that have successfully made it or what they're doing. That'd just be my only thing. Basically to do enough research, right? Yeah, before they go into something. Not going into a blind... Um, right. So, so, what, so what advice do you have for me, since I'm always in school, to help me finish, I can't seem to finish. <laughs> I mean, You're going at your own. Pace. My old ass is still in school, I'm like, but my son's finishing, I, so I feel like. I, well, he's I, not quite finished. I, I mean, he still has to do med school, so yeah, he, residency, he still, research. There's a lot. Yeah. So, so how how can how can I finish? Help me. Should I ask you? Help me. <laughs> What are you looking forward to the most about launching? Or what are you looking forward to the most about adulthood on your own? Making money. Adulting. Making money. Y'all hear that, right? Making money. Uh, That's not what I thought he was going to say. Well, first of all, I ain't making that much well, it's in nice. research. Right? more than whatever I'm having you now. So. Well, yeah, I go from zero to something. All right. Well, that's that. That's all you're looking forward to. That, that's that's really more the independence. Yeah. The money represents really the independence yeah. because mm -hmm. by making the money, you, you, there's something that's your own that you can choose to do what mm -hmm. you want to do, mm -hmm. versus feeling like this is coming from your parents and mm -hmm. therefore there's strings attached. All right. What's the first thing you're gonna buy when you quote have a little bit of money? And I don't mean like you're wealthy, but your first big check, whatever that may be. What is it that you're looking forward to buying? Uh, nothing. Probably just stocks. Stock? I don't, besides rent, I don't want to, you know. And food. I mean, that's not big. She said big purchase. Right. When you're hungry, it's a big purchase. <laughs> for you, for you, it's a big purchase. <laughs> there you go. See? You gotta give and take a little bit. <laughs> you plan to get in a relationship soon after, you know, going out on your own, or is that idea of arranged marriage something you're taking seriously, or what's your thoughts about relationship as you uh, go on your own? I'm going to focus on preparing for um, med school applications and research, and so if it comes along, it comes along, but it's not on my list right now. It's mm -hmm. not a priority. So it's not a priority? No, and then the arranged marriage thing, it's Ask me again if, when I'm too busy. Okay. All right. <laughs> so y'all hear that. He's not quite running into no arranged marriage anytime soon. Neither is he running into a relationship. His focus is going to be his education and career. No, well, because there have been a few people who've actually reached out and told me they had daughters waiting for him or ready for him. And I don't know quite how to respond. So that's why I'm letting you know. Well, you just say, thank you. <laughs> well, you know, that's uh, nice. But yeah, he's focused on, you know, his career and stuff. And if it happens, it happens. All right. What will you miss most about having your parents close by? <clears throat> that, that the answer is in the question, just you being close by. But I'll still like call and stop and see you guys. Yeah, it's not like yeah, far away. It's just like an extended vacation, right. you know. Like he was, he was up there for the summer, um, mm -hmm. doing that internship. Right, but we knew he was coming home, and there was an end to it. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's got two years, and then, and depending on where he goes to med school. So. Right. 
So, but, but unless he goes to med school like far away, it just depends on where he gets accepted. So. I asked you the other day about his favorite color, his favorite food, and you weren't sure. So yes, there's quite a lot you well, don't I know about him. I said it was blue. It's like a dark blue. And then you told me it's some weird purple. <coughs> you don't like purple. I don't. I like purple and blue. See, he hedges. Now it's purple and blue. It's cause so you like prints and what? My phone is blue, but my case is purple. Yeah. I like both colors. You like them, but your favorite color since you were young was a dark blue. Yeah, and then I grew to like purple as I got older. Mm. <clears throat> What's your favorite food? I mean, Pizza? It's like, there's like the Jamaican beef patty, and then I also like chicken alfredo all the time. Mm. Yeah. And that's like, that's like it. Well, but I also uh, Mossaman curry. Yeah. Thai. See, it just depends actually on mm. the type of food. Type of food. Yeah, then you have a preferred dish within mm -hmm. that type of food. Mm -hmm. You also like ground nut stew, mm -hmm. yeah, when your mom makes it. What could we have done better as parents? Like, think about us individually, and uh, what could we have done better as parents? Like, when you think about yourself when you were a child or at more recently, what could we have done different or better in your opinion? And nothing you say will hurt our feelings, so feel free to be completely honest. I don't know. Um, could have done better. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like you guys have set me up well for my current position in life, so I don't know. There's some things that you can't change, so I don't have a clear answer for parenting wise. You guys have done. I could, I, I could have spanked you more because you don't remember anything when you were young, so I could have spanked you and then you would have probably forgot about it. So I wasted a lot of spanking That years. would have made it better. What's your earliest memory? Uh, I don't know. Exactly, so you saw I could have spanked you and you wouldn't even remember. <laughs> See, I wasted spanking years. You remember any of the dogs that we had? Um, only the chihuahua that got ran over before. Oh my God, the that's the kind of memory you remember. We didn't have a chihuahua that got ran See, over. False memories. Right. We See, didn't have a chihuahua that got ran over. Spanked it was you. a small dog. Right? Should have spanked you. See, you don't remember anything. We did have a dog that got run over. How about the pony? Wasn't... Remember the pony? No. Do you remember the pony? I don't think we had one. There you go. Yeah. We didn't I was, have a pony. I was pony. just checking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do All you right. have any questions that you have never asked or you've been afraid to ask your father? I don't have any questions that I'm afraid to ask him. You sure? Yeah, that I would benefit from knowing, so. Mm -hmm. and <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of extra information that I could know, but I'd rather not. That's right. Oh, wow. Sometimes things just stay mysterious. Now, are there any questions that you've never asked me? Even though, you know, you obviously I'm, I'm an open book, you right? Just, you just tell. Open. Yeah, I just tell everything. <laughs> I don't have any secrets, no, right? I prepared. Oh, so go ahead. Give me a prepared question. Go ahead. These are, I got these from Google. You got these from Google. Okay, so that's you, typical to live fashion. You got his questions from Google. All right, go ahead. We'll answer at we're, we're interested. What were your expectations for your 50s when you were my age, if you had any? Um. What are expectations? Like, like what, where'd, where'd you see yourself? 50? Where'd you see yourself when you were my age, uh, when you were older? Like, what'd you imagine? What you would be like, middle age? I could imagine myself middle age. So and when I was at your age, yeah. or because middle you, age was like, or like death. your future self. My future self. My future self was your age. Okay. Yeah, I never, I never saw myself like at this at this stage. At this stage, to me, it's like wow. Every day I wake up like, I'm this age, crazy. And still in school, crazier. <laughs> and I got a son that won't give me any hints and help, unbelievable. Mm. Won't even share notes, I'll tell you, man. We're in different fields. Well, yeah, but that's, that's, that's a technicality. Well, I would say <laughs> what expectations I had for myself at age 50 Wow, it's so foreign to me even, yeah, the concept that I'm 50. Exactly. Because I seriously still feel like, I don't know if it's good or it's bad, but I still feel like I operate like I'm in my 30s. Yeah, my 30s. Um, I always thought 50s 
was old. Now I just turned 50, so I'm not gonna say 50s, I just turned 50. But I always thought, yeah, like 50 seemed old, but now I realize it's not really old and really all of us are just older versions of ourself. We are really the same self, I mean, when it comes down to the core. But I thought maybe by this age, I would have all the answers, I would have it all together, I would have a level of understanding about the universe. Um, and what I realize as I've gotten older is that I've gotten more questions and that I feel less like I've arrived. So I guess sometimes I feel maybe a little disappointed that I'm not exactly where I thought I would be in life, whatever that was, and that I don't have all the answers or solutions and I'm still constantly learning, which is still, on the other hand, a good thing because I think now I realize when you know everything, when you think you have it all together, that's when you die, at least in my opinion. So I, I, I have to balance this idea of but you never you're know. constantly but you, a student but, in life. Yeah, that, but that's the thing. Life is a classroom that never ends. Right. It's a journey. Right, but I mean, when process. I was younger, yeah. I always looked at people who were like 50 and thought, oh, they really have it together. Oh, oh they really know, you know, they've made their money, they're successful, they're this, they're that. And then I'm here and I'm like, yeah, I'm see, not that, there. But that's just, yeah, but see, that's like the corner of what you're seeing. See, right. when you see a person, you don't know all the, all the, all the struggles that goes behind it. You're just seeing, it's just right. like, it's like a glimmer of the night sky. You just see that, that, that starlight mm. that's traveled millions of years, but you don't know what through that journey it is. You just see that pinpoint in time. So same thing, when you see that so-called successful person, you don't see the losses and, and, and right. everything else that goes with it, whether it could be very financially successful, but very poor in relationships. Right. You know, you know, and and, and that they and then they may have the accoutrements of success, but inside they're still a, a, a lonely child that right. is seeking acceptance. Or they're empty. Oh, we know people right. like that. Whereas you have people that may not have all, all the, the material money, but things, their, but their life but... is full of love and connections. And right. Stuff. So it's right. really about. Right, so I, you know, I'm not to say that I'm disappointed with my life. I'm not disappointed, Definitely. but I'm just saying there's this realization that just because you got older doesn't necessarily mean that everything falls into place or that you have all the golden answers or solutions. Of course, no, it's a journey. Yeah, so all right. So yeah. So you know. see, that's how you get different perspectives <laughs> from your parents. Um, knowing what you know now. If you had to do it all again, would you change your career choices or the jobs that you've done over the duration of your current? Yeah, I mean, that's a tricky one for both of us. Well, no, way. I mean, the, no, I think about these things because sometimes what it is is that you think, okay, my career choices and so forth. But sometimes, if no way to look at it is that your choices is really stems from you, and so at that time. The choices you make is really a reflection of you. So you would have to change you, not necessarily the choice, because the choice is really, and then, and then it's a feedback loop, because then that choice that you made, if you are open to learn from it, then changes you to the next choice. Does that make sense? So it's, almost, it's, it's, like, it's, like, it's like that stream that constantly changes. And, and, and so if I go back and say, well, if I made that different choice, at a certain point, if I go fur further enough back, you may not be here, I may not be married to your mother, you see what I'm saying? So it's all these different choices that, that one makes because it stems from you know where you're at at that certain point in life. All right, so I guess for me, if I summarize that question, what you're really asking is do I have any regrets? Is that how I should look at it? No, or if you felt like you've found a new path in life, but if you wanted to start on it sooner, you know, would you have done that? Um, I guess kind of like your dad says, you, only, you, you kind of operate with what you, the tools you have at the time. And, uh, you know, as, as, in terms of starting another career or making other choices, I mean, as far as I've always known, 
I've always been encouraged to go into medicine and be a doctor and uh, uh, that's what I knew and that's what I pursued. But I'm a strong believer that just because you make decisions when you're younger doesn't mean those decisions need to define you for the rest of your life. Meaning that you will make decisions in your 20s or in your teens that you need to reevaluate as you get older. So I don't necessarily have any regrets or some, there's nothing that I would have done differently. I just know that at different points in my life, I've needed different things based on what I've known and what I uh, thought was important. But as I've gotten older, I reevaluate my life and then I do something else. So I always want you to know that just because you make choices now don't mean those choices have to be fixed. It's your life to do with as you please. And um, whenever you feel like you need to reevaluate and do something different, you do that. So personally, I really don't have any regrets about anything I've done. I think we've made different choices that have benefited our children. We've, meet, we've lived in small towns. We've lived in places people would not never want to live in. But at the time, we thought it was the best choice for us and our kids. Or at the time, it was the best choice for my career or my training. And then we reevaluate and decide, now nah, we're done with small town. Let's move to a big city. Or, nah, I don't want to do private practice anymore. Let me work for someone else. Or, no, I hate working for someone else. Now I want to work for myself. So I just think that part of it is just taking ownership of your life and your choices and doing with it as you please, but not wasting time with regret. Mm -hmm. As long as each moment in time or each step in your career, it served a purpose and then you move on. Yeah, constantly reevaluate because again, the environment changes. See, that's the other thing too. It's like the thing too is that, you know, your mom's career, but that at the time, you know, when we were growing up, computers were just being created. There were no cell phones. See, it sounds crazy because it's so ubiquitous. Everyone has a cell phone. But when we were growing up, you didn't have cell phones the way you have cell phones, these, these mini computers. So these present different opportunities. Medicine was also very different. It was very traditional. You had private practices. Now it's all corporatized. You know, medicine is very corporate now. So it's very different structures, different different reimbursement schemes, you know, and it's going to change. The pandemic has shown also a different uh, right. aspect, and that's changing also the way people work remotely, also in a way of recruitment and development and stuff like that. And, and also it's challenging what is the concept of safety nets. You know, my parents taught me uh, that, hey, you work for someone, you put in your 20 years, you go to college, everything works out fine. And we know right. that's an illusion. And that's so untrue, you know, but that's what I'm saying. So, so our advice to you is not, to, it's not giving you the advice my parents gave me. You have that to learn to adapt. You've got to learn to adapt. You have to be flexible and you have to constantly evaluate your environment and look at your skills. I think one of the critical things is always constantly be learning and earning and ideally do both. You always got, don't, don't, don't just get too comfortable. I think the thing is that you got to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. It's just like being comfortable with change. Everything's always in a state of change. Everything, it, 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 and you gotta have more than one revenue stream. So if there was anything to take out of that, is that you gotta constantly be working on yourself and on the developing um, and reassessing, just like your mom said, says, you know? And, and develop multiple skills, you know? So. All right, what's your last question? <laughs> Last question is, what is your greatest achievement? Oof, it's my greatest achievement. I would say my greatest achievement is my well-adjusted children. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I think my greatest achievement is my well-adjusted children. Um, yeah, that, you know, this immigrant from Nigeria, managed to, I mean, I didn't do it on my own, but still managed to get a great education and managed to make sure that despite being initially a foreigner in a foreign land, that I've managed to tap into a lot of resources 
um, again, not on my own, but certainly with the help of a lot of great people before me, um, and now to hand over the baton to my children, to my children, that not only are they smart people, they are good people. So I have no doubt, honestly, like if I die tomorrow, and I hate sounding morbid, but that's just how it is, I always feel like, did I do the best as a parent? And I think I raised or helped raise along with Ken, some good humans. <laughs> I don't have any greatest achievements. Why would you say that, Kenton? Because my story is not uh, written yet. That's true. Well, so, up until this point, though, what is your to, up, up until this, this point? point? Yeah. Well, I still got an outstanding paternity test, so I can't claim anything. Paternity test. <laughs> Your son wants an answer, Kenton. Well, you ain't gonna get it because I just told you I don't have any great achievement. I'm still in school. <laughs> what about like? Yeah, I think that the fact that you're not a non-traditional student, you know, I'm, and you've had you know a lot of I'm successful careers. Everything. <laughs> I'm non-traditional. Everything. I, I'm a mess. Hey, you've married to stay married. How about that one? Oh my God, that's more of a decision on your part. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> See? Khalid, your dad can't you, answer a question. You can't get a straight answer. I object! What's wrong with him? <laughs> you brought me down. <laughs> What is wrong with him? Looking for. Hopefully you guys got something out of this. Hopefully you'll sit at the table and have a conversation with your teenagers or with your, you know, graduating students, whatever the case may be. Um, but we hope you got something out of this. And also I hope that to all of our family watching, this serves as, I guess, an informal announcement. Kalin is graduating UNC <laughs> with a biology major and honors, right? Honors in biology. I wish he would tell you himself. I wish he would tell you himself, Kalin. Do one of these. <laughs> I, don't have, I don't have enough hair for that. You don't have enough hair for that. So, yeah, thank you guys for listening. Thank you, Khalid, for joining us. Thank you for being a good sport, sort of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Daddy-O, <laughs> Daddy-O, say goodbye. Bye folks, appreciate you guys, thank you. Bye! Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't yet. What are you waiting for? <laughs> Bye! Right, I feel like my face has gotten so fat. I need to lose weight. Mm -hmm. I need to lose weight? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I do need to lose weight. Mm. Daddy-o, we need to lose weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah.